Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Dr. Shishu Paul, Director and Head of Pediatrics at Madhukar Rainbow Children's Hospital, New Delhi. Uh, today, I start off with a topic which has been covered again and again, but something that is bothering us all the time as the problem carries on. COVID is there for times to come, and we have to manage our outpatient departments. Patients are calling us all the time, and we have to get to our job and move on and uh, here are some suggestions as to how we can move on with our clinics. I'm very sure you have gone through most of these points over many lectures that have taken place from time to time. This is to revise certain points. And also maybe I will be able to add on one or two suggestions, which will uh, may be new to you and which can be done. And, uh, first thing is how to proceed. You know, when we are going to open up the clinic, how to proceed, we should have prepare the patient waiting area of your patients in case you have a waiting area can wait outside also i'll go through those points one by one what is to be done at the entry point of the clinic uh, what should be done before entering the doctor's chamber after patients leave the clinic how do you sanitize the clinic and instructions for staff handling the clinic and last step is of course sterilization of the clinic as you finish the clinic and prepare for the next day these all are very important because uh, we have to see that our clinic should not be an area uh, for infection. We have to prevent cross infection and we have to do a lot to protect ourselves and the patients altogether. So first of all, the clinic area, it should be a well ventilated clinic. You should have proper ventilation in your clinic and provide stock supplies. There should be enough tissues, alcohol-based hand rubs, soap as sinks, and disposable of waste, of course, as per the guidelines. This, the If you are having a waiting area, which many of us these days prefer not to have, there should be a, dif a difference of at least six feet between the patient and one patient and the other. And you can also use barrier plastic curtains if it must be for the waiting areas and remove all toys reading material display of awards etc whatever extra you have in the clinic which I, normally in our clinic we do to make our clinics more attractive better for the children and they can come and play with a lot of toys cycles whatever you have please remove everything anything that is not essential please remove everything so that your sterilization work is much easier and much better Keep the walls and surfaces clear, clear of objects for easy cleaning. If the surface has too many things attached to it, the wall cleaning, etc., becomes difficult. You should have a smooth surface so that the cleaning is much easy. You should keep all the doors open so that not everybody is touching, opening the doors, closing the doors, so that the touching of surface becomes least possible. And of course, as we try to avoid patients coming to the clinic, we have to get into an era of telemedicine. Telemedicine consultation has its own limitations and has its own advantages. We have to weigh all this and think what you want to do. We are not always comfortable with all the patients on telemedicine. Then, of course, we have to tell them to come. But if certain problems can be solved by telemedicine and if the patient can avoid coming to the clinic, it must be encouraged. At the entry point, the staff at the entrance of the waiting area is to screen the patients for symptoms. Basically, they have to see that the, not only the child who is coming in, but even the attendant, but better to restrict to one attendant. But sometimes some parents force you on it, the two wants to come out. Really such a situation. But you, anybody who is coming in has to be screened so that they're not having fever. And of course, the simple questions like, are you surprised or any cough and cold? And of course, that should be done. The clinic staff should wear a three-layered three surgical mask gloves and face shield so that they are protected. It is very important that you protect your clinic staff because they themselves should be protected for their own benefit. Also, if they become a symptomatic carrier or something, they can be source of infection to others. If the patients are coming with face masks, the attendants and children more than two years of age, below two years, we don't like to use face masks, but they can use a small cover or something in front. But uh, uh, Otherwise, they all should have face mask. In case if anybody has come without a face mask, you must see to it that you provide a face mask so that the parents' nose, uh, nose and face is covered. 
thermal scan should be done and alcohol based hand rub should be given so that they wash their hands and they clean their hands and sterilize it before coming either you can make them change the shoes and change over to some uh, slippers or chappals which you can call as in shoes and again leave it while going out or you can efficiently use even shoe covers as it is shown on this photograph here i have seen the thermal scanning hand washing facility the uh, facility for uh, yeah like sanitizers and of course this is the shoe covers you can give and patient they are of course disposable as the patient leave the clinic they are just discarded and limit visitors to one attendant with one child. And mask is, of course, mask for everybody. I know we have problems. A lot of parents insist that no, the father and mother both of them, but please try to be strict. The least number of persons coming into your clinic is good for everybody. Before entering the job, doctor's chamber actually we have to plan out our opds because there are clean babies the vaccination babies who have to be separate in uh, treated in a separate manner and the sick now it depends on how your clinic is suggested. supposing you have two clinics morning clinic evening clinic then you have to time out it's better that you give vaccines in the morning clinic and call all the sick babies in the evening or vice versa whatever suits you more but supposing you are not able to do that you have only one clinic uh, one timing then you have to divide your clinic hours the, like first half of the clinic maybe one hour or one and a half hours whatever your timings are you have for clean babies in a sterilized clinic which has been sterilized overnight and kept clean and the vaccination patients come one by one space out the appointments don't try to crowd the apartment and see that they come in and better to make them wait in the car or outside they come in take the vaccine go away and then the next patient comes in and the second half, of course, you can have your sick baby clinic. You can limit to whatever extent you want. Some of us don't prefer to see too many cough and cold patients, depending on your age and your own risk factor. That is, you have to plan according to what you can do and your needs. And it is better if you have a separate examination table, stethoscope, and other examination tools for the sick babies and different set for the babies who are well. Posters about prevention actions at entrances. Some you can have recently a lot of posters have come out. You can at the entrance have a few posters, which is for education to the patients. All patients are seen by prior appointment that is paired and spaced out. If anybody has come without a turn and is waiting outside, you have to see when you can adjust that patient, tell them to wait. But by and large, discourage patients without appointments, especially at least the vaccine ones will wait outside in their own vehicles, will be called by the clinic staff on turn. They can leave their mobile number or there can be a boy outside who knows where the patient is located and call them. It is better to call them on the mobile number or phone number. Whatever. There has been uh, a decision to take consent, a self-declaration form, even uh, various bodies, including IAP, have declared it. We don't know exactly what is the value of this form, but it is better to take it just as a sort of a consent from the patient that they are not sick and there and there is a slight risk, whatever be it. And it is one of the necessary add-ons we try and do. And of course, try to make digital mode of payment as far as possible because no a physical uh, currency by itself would be a source of infection. If they can do an online transfer, it is much better than even using a credit card because credit card also can be carriers of the virus. These are several posters which are there going all around. If you have some, you can display them uh, in your clinic place. Uh, they are differently made out by different bodies. There are, they give nice uh, things, but I think by and large today, most of the people know what these are. And another set of posters, uh, and I think the most important thing that the world has learned today is not to shake hand and do a namaste, which now today India is teaching the whole world. And I think at least a good majority of the world people have started about uh, taking this as a mode of greeting, which of course is a very, very big thing. The next important thing of, is of course the social distancing of six feet distance between person to person which I know is not being maintained by a lot of people. They just come close, talk to you, but please try to maintain the distance because as we learn more about this virus, we know aerosol transmission is there and the distance may be even more than six feet. But I think in a practical manner, six feet is the practical solution these days. 
then of course uh, avoid when you cough sneeze all these precautions are there whether uh, like personal contact contaminated objects mass gathering they all should be avoided hand washing is of course very important i think we have all learned a minimum of 20 seconds of hand washing uh, is important and we are all learning this thing but this is a repetition and not only we but our all our patients should be educated to follow these things after the patient leaves a clinic and when before the next next patient some surface cleaning is to be done and one of the good surface cleaning agents is ethyl propyl alcohol which is 100% not the normally hand sanitizer we're using. Hand sanitizer some amount of water. Bas it comes by the name of Basilol. There are other companies also. This is one of the standard preparations. And this should be used wherever the patient has been touched. Like if, uh, if you are using a disposable seat, that is fine. Otherwise, you should have a uh, plastic sheet or something which can be easily cleaned up with Basilol. Your stethoscope should be cleaned. Uh, and then, of course, anything that they have touched, the surface of the table, or the outside surface, patient, children tend to hold on to a lot of things if they have touched anything like doorknobs, handles, station a pen, telephones, examination tools, credit card machines, they all should be sterilized before your next patient comes in. And of course, your own hand hygiene is very important. Either you wash your hands for minimum of 20 seconds with soap and water, or of course, you have to use your hand sanitizers. In the clinic, never use dry dusting and cleaning of floors with one person serum cry whenever you close the clinic and up later sterilization, of course, I'll be talking to you. But if any contamination of the floor has taken place, then of course you must sterilize it before the next patient comes in. For the doctors and staff handling patients, you have to use proper personal protective equipment which for general patients in the OPD, which includes Better if you can use a waterproof apron because then the contamination is much less and gloves of course they need not be sterilized but you have to sanitize them with hand sanitizers or wash them with soap and water whenever you are using them. Most important thing is you should see that the mask is properly on. You know where a lot of times you will see there is a mask but it is just hanging around the neck which serves no purpose. On the other end it gets more contaminated and the mask should cover both the mouth and the nose otherwise the infection goes both ways you also can get infected and of course you can give infections up you should not touch the outside of the mask which is a very common practice and if at all you have done it due to any any reason you should sanitize your hand and of course for the clinic staff n95 masks may be used it is better than the surgical mask but depend on the exposure you can even surgical masks are not uh, good enough for the normal clinic staff depending and uh, glasses or goggles should be given because we know that uh, any splash by crying baby can give rise to aerosols and also eye by itself and we tend to ten, uh, touch our uh, face, the nose, uh, mouth off and on. So of course with the mask lot is restricted, but still you should use uh, glass goggles or can be used and or a head visor to cover the face while examining a sick child. Gloves can be rubber gloves also, but nitrile gloves are preferred because first of all, they do not breach very easily. Uh, they are more resistant to breaks and of course they are not sticky. The normally rubber gloves, latex gloves tends to become sticky after you have used sanitizers on them. But of course they can be used and you can even change after one or two patients depending on the requirement and what type of patients you are handling. This 6H is the important factor. Uh, this we are all observing these days. This is to reduce the transmission. First is hand washing. Hand washing is not just that you take soap water and wash your hands. It has got a specific scientific technique where you wash your hands properly. First is the front of the hands that the palm you rub properly both into the fingers. Then the back of the hands you go to the palm. Then you wash the fingers properly both sides including then the thumbs have to be washed properly then the tip of the fingers have to be washed and the wrist has to be washed these are the more important six steps you have to follow one by one so that your hand is washed properly uh, not what we normally do in uh, this is like almost surgical cleaning of the hands what surgeons do before wash uh, washing up for the surgery or something these steps have to be followed 
then of course the hand folding namaste no sh shaking hands no touching no patting it's just a distance is better then of course the hand sanitizer is very important we all know we need minimum 70 percent alcohol based hand sanitizers and the way you sanitize is you rub it over your hands and it is not a question of time you have to wait till the whole alcohol over your hand get evaporated once it becomes dry it is sterile just putting and immediately doing work is not good you have to wait for the alcohol to get evaporated then your hands become sterile and of course maintaining distance hand distance of two meters is very important and of course use a handkerchief or if you are cuffing with you don't have you must cuff into your folded arms into your arm and of course the one important push, uh, transmission we know by your hands you can transmit your to your, your contaminated hands you should avoid touching the mouth eyes and nose or at all times unless you have of course sanitized your hands very well and uh, this uh, slide i think most of you might have seen it has been online for a very long time and this slide is very important uh, by the way and you see if uh, you are a covid carrier and you are without mask supposing you are coming across a covid carrier the other person is infected and is without mask and you are using using a mask it serves little, very little purpose you still there is high chances about 70 percent but if the carrier is wearing a mask and you are not wearing a mask because the carrier is wearing a mask for any type of infect respiratory infection, your chance of infection is very less. That is, the anybody who is infected wearing mask is very important. So it is very important that you tell the person on the other side to wear a mask to protect yourself. Of course, if you both are wearing mask, nothing like it. That is the best possible scenario where the chance of transmission from the person to you is one point. This is, of course, only for the aerosol transmission I'm talking. We are, I'm not talking about uh, the other transmission which can take place by surface, etc. This is regarding person-to-person -person thing. And regarding the healthcare workers, the risk of transmission when you are working is we are just doing hand washing alone. It is about 55%. If you're hand washing and using proper mask, about 70%. If you are using gloves, PP, everything, you get over 90% protection. I mean, we can only increase this. So the more steps that you will follow each and every step, do everything, cover, use PPs, use face masks, use face shields, they all help you. And you have to, based on the risk involved, you better use all these facilities because there's a high incidence of healthcare workers getting infected from patients or asymptomatic carriers and i think every hospital you might have seen the doctors the nurses or the other assistant staffs are getting infected how to wear a mask and remove a mask is very important this is in general it is for all this is for person using a mask whether you are using it at home or you are using it in public or you are use it in your clinics it is a very important thing how to wear a mask and how to dispose of a mask for healthy people, you wear a mask in the house only if you are taking care of a suspected or infected patient. Inside the house, most if everything is fine, you need not wear it. If you are coughing or sneezing, you must wear a mask. Masks are effective only used in combination of frequent hand cleaning and with alcohol-based rubber stuff. Just wearing a mask, your surface contamination does go away. And you must also frequently wash your hands and don't feel totally secure by just wearing a mask. Your hands are also carriers of the disease from surfaces. And then when you wear a mask, you must know of course how to dispose it up properly. Before putting on a mask, you must clean your hands with alcohol. Suppose your hands are unsterile, you pick up the mask and wear it, then of course you are contaminating the mask also. Then, of course, when you wear the mask, you should see to it that you are covering your mouth and nose properly and make sure there are no gaps between your face and the mask. There are always some sort of a steel bands or a flexible bands available on top of the mask. You should adjust it so that it fits your nose properly and see that your mouth and nose are well covered and there's no gaps. The next step is avoid touching the mask while using it. That is, it's very often the mask comes down. We are constantly holding the front of the mask and putting it up and down. That is wrong. You should adjust it from the strap. And if at all you have touched the front of the mask, then you must clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. 
before you proceed to do any work. Whenever you want to remove the mask, remove it from behind. Do not touch the front of the mask and take it off. You should go back, touch, touch the straps, discard it, and of course, of course, discarding again, sanitize your hands in the usual method with hand rub or anyone. Again, once again, I'm repeating these instructions before putting on mask, clean hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap. Cover mouth with nose and nose with mask and no gaps between face and the mask. Avoid touching the outer side of the mask. Replace the mask. Sometimes the surgical mask tends to become damp after some time. If damp and wet, then of course you must change the mask. Do not re reuse single-use mask. Surgical masks are single-use mask. You should not reuse them. Remove the mask from behind and discard immediately in a closed bin and then clean your hands. This is, I have once again repeated what I had earlier told you. And when to wear medical masks and to protect your mask should be worn by everyone when outside. When you're going outside, everyone should use a mask, partly for your protection and more than that to protect others by not giving infection. The healthy people can wear a mask, care of a person, sorry, healthy wear a mask when taking care of a person. This is inside the house. Wear a mask if one is coughing or sneezing. If you are having any sort of respiratory, you must wear a mask. Masks are effective only when used in combination with hand cleaning. There are various types of masks in the market. I mean, right from simple ones like your cloth mask, agile mask, to most advanced masks. I mean, some of them with filters, some of them with fans and everything. But basically for our routine purposes, uh, we should know what we should do. Made of most of the masks are made of non-woven material of microfibers with an electrostatic charge. It is multi-layered. Respirator masks meant to wear protect the wearer. That is, when you are using respirator mask, there's a class of masks like N95 and they protect the wearer more. Surgical masks are meant to protect others against the infection transmission of a wearer called as source control. That is, if we all are using a mask, surgical mask or a cloth mask, actually we are preventing infection prevention by not letting the transmission go outside into the air or surface. Of course, to protect against splash and butter in the clinic, you, the healthcare worker should use face shields, protect against splash and splatter of secretion of the nose. Children, while they're crying, they can suddenly cough, they can suddenly vomit. So it is much better that you use a face shield for the healthcare workers. Face shields alone is not recommended. That is just putting a face shield, not using a mask is not recommended. You must have. Cloth masks are less effective than the medical grade mask, but for general public use, cloth masks are much better. Surgical masks may be in short supply. So do not you know, insist on surgical. For the general public, proper cloth masks are good enough and it is fine. Only if you are infected or something, it is. These are some of the photographs of the mask. This is, of course, the normal surgical mask that we are using. Uh, that surgeons use it even in OT, et cetera. As you know, uh, this is basically worn by the surgeon so that he doesn't pass on infection to the operation. And this is not protecting the surgeon. That's simply to prevent others. Cloth mask, of course, today, the whole public is supposed to use at least a cloth mask so that whenever they are going out, they are not spreading infection. I mean, it may be anybody. And whenever you talk to somebody, see to it that minimum they are having a cloth mask on so that they are not contaminating the atmosphere. This is some of the face shield you can see, transparent colorless face shields, which are, of course, being used when you are in a more contaminated surface like healthcare workers facing the patients or something. Among the respiratory masks, I mean, the most common that we see these days is the N95 respiratory mask, which, of course, is safe enough and it protects you from COVID-19. There are two types with valve, without valve. I'll talk a little bit about it a little later. And 95% of the particular matter is filtered off by N95 mask. There are more advanced, more better masks available like N99 mask, which of course filters 99%, 4% more of particles compared to the N95 mask. But you see, as you go on to the higher grade, remember one thing, breathing through the mask becomes more and more difficult. It is not easy to wear a N99 mask without valve and walk for you. You tend to suffocate very fast, but this is available, so I'm telling you, but this is not meant for normal public. This 
This is again a diabetic photographs of various types available in the market. Uh, you can see, I mean, this is meant for more of healthcare workers. Like you have the helmet like face shield where you have a strap here with the elastic band and the face shield is most commonly being used. You get face shield with head cover also. This is more used in, in uh, more, uh, suppose you are uh, handling more of infected patients. This is another type of face shield. You can get face mask with attached upper face shield. It just goes from above. Then helmet like face shield, very similar. There are various different models. This is like this. And this is face shield with a frame clip you can get. And this is a mask incorporated with a plastic sheet so that your this thing is covered. Then there are various types of glasses available, the specs or the glasses or goggles, whatever you like to call it in various types. This is important. You can wear it over your own spectacles also. This gives quite a bit of protection from the side, especially if the side is protected uh, instead of this. But uh, like the voice tends to echo quite a bit when you are using something like this. Sometimes it's very difficult to speak, uh, carry on working with this. You can use something like this. Surgeons are using a lot of this while doing surgery. Then how to sterilize the mask? You see N95 mask actually can be disposed after you one use, but there is a shortage of it and it is not possible for us to, to supply to all the people N95 mask first. There are various ways it can be reused. One of the commonest thing is air drying them. If you leave them for two to three days in clean air drying in a breathable paper bag or something, then it can be reused. You must avoid direct sunlight and also even direct ultraviolet. Some people say you can uh, style with ultraviolet, right? But it is better to sometimes it damages them. Heating in an oven for 30 minutes, 70 degrees centigrade is also one of the known methods, but I don't think it's a very practical way of doing things. And this is the best thing. Only thing for this, you should have multiple masks. I'll just show you how to use it. Then there can be chemical, chemical cells, hydrogen peroxide, or ethylene oxide, but again, this I think the most practical way, once again, I repeat, is this. And then, of course, whenever you use this mask, you have to sterilize them in the proper way. I just tell you, I'll come to this figure again after a little time, like you can keep three or four masks and you can mark them at one, two, three, four, and then reuse them over time. Then end of the clinic sterilization. It is very important. Like you have seen a group of patient vaccination clinic is over. You sterilize or you sterilize again. This is clean the flows with one person sodium hypochlorite solution by wet, mop, by wet mopping. No dry dusting. You must clean the walls with one person sodium hypochlorite solution wherever it has been touched. Or you can use the fogging method. Fogging machines are available. It is easily available even in India these days. Most of them are coming from abroad and that can be used. Like this is one of the fogging machines I can show you. Just give me a six, 10 seconds. You, there are various solutions available. Sodium hypochlorite is one of them, but there are other various solutions available. Uh, three, four of them in the markets and the sodium after spraying is not all that safe inhalation is not good there are other solutions available and you can use them they are available to three of them and in they have different dilutions this is the end of the clinic you sterilize and then go away one of important method of clinic sterilization during interval cleaning that is when your clinic is going on uh, that Infection is coming around the clock. You know, if there is somebody coming, going, some amount of virus is floating. So you have to clean the surface basal all as I told you, as the patient walks out, but it is not totally, it's not covering the whole surface. For continuous disinfection there, during clinic hours, we have other machines which are known as hydroxyl ion disinfectors. This is available. They are all being imported. There are various methods of using this, like uh, hydro, uh, there can be either by the ultraviolet rays, which is a natural way of disinfection. That is when even in atmosphere, when the sun rays are coming with ozone and water, hydroxyl ions are formed, which is sterilizing the atmosphere. That is natural way it is going on. And it can be done by ultraviolet or there are hydrogen peroxide type uh, sterilizers, hydroxyl sterilizer. This is one of the diagrams of one of the models available. And as I told you though, I'm Reading it out just for you removes 99% of the novel coronavirus. This has been, this is an approved FDA technology. 
The actual technology has been extensively tested against DNA, RNA viruses that approach, uh, has been used by FDA-approved testing. Demonstrate that hydroxyl air is effective against a full range of viruses, no matter the protective lipid. lipid. These viruses are surrogate for C90 mine, making OH as a fast and effective treatment solution to the viruses. OH is the only technology available that can actively reduce the viral contamination in occupied spaces. You see, sanitizing or sterilizing unoccupied spaces is much easier, but a lot of them are toxic. Like you cannot spray hydrogen peroxide with a, with a sprayer or fogging machine when somebody is inside. You have to just move out. So this is one which can be used for continuous disinfection. And this does not need to pass through. You know, this is not that, this is not like uh, the HEPA filters where, you know, the air has to pass through, get sterilized and come out. This is sterilizing the air and the surfaces in the clinic. It helps in both air and surface clinic. This is one of the diagrams showing how it falls with time, the uh, viral count. The next thing is this, uh, again, a reminder for what you can do and these common acronyms are used like women, which is wash hands for 20 seconds, observe social distancing, M for mask, E for elbow cuffing, which is uh, supposing you suddenly have to cuff and you nothing, your handkerchief except not around, you can do elbow cuffing so that you don't contaminate your hand. And of course, nitrile gloves are better than the normal latex gloves. It's conscious use and it's easily sterilized. Then men, that is avoid touching the mouth, uh, touching the eyes and touching the nose because that is one of the mucous membranes is a major source of infection in persons. This is ultraviolet disinfection, but that, mind you, this cannot be done during the working hours. Either at the end of the clinic, you can leave your ultraviolet light on for some time. There are various models available all over, or you can do it before anybody comes into the clinic in the morning. This will uh, uh, sterilize the atmosphere, but you can't use it while it is being used. And this is a pirate program, which uh, the somewhere in New York, the trains are being sterilized. When so it is empty, it goes to the yard. They use the ultraviolet light for half an hour or something when it is in the dark before it comes back for circulation because all surfaces are getting contaminated. Metro in New York was supposed to be one of the major sources crowded metros, which made the situation very bad. So now, once again, I'm talking about a surgical mask. They should be tight fitting, not designed for self-protection. Single use, no washing or drying. Life is about three to eight hours, but supposing they have gone wet or they are, then you must. N95 with exhalation valve, that is the common mask we are using. Remind you, it is giving protection to the user the same level as one without valve. But it is easier to use because of exhalation. If you are using an N95 without mask, it is difficult for you to breathe and sometimes you cannot take it for long. And it reduces the moisture also that builds up. But mind you, one important thing, if you are using an N95 with mask, the user can spread infection to exhalation. So use another surgical mask over it to produce, produce prevent exhalation. That is very important. That is, you use a N95 mask with a valve, supposing in the clinic, then use a surgical mask over it so that when you are exhaling, the contamination is not going out. Extended use versus reuse N95. Extended use is when you are using it for a longer time without removing. You can use an N95 for quite some time without using if you are uh, using it continuously. You can use it multiple times after remove the number, but maintain its fitting and filtration. Must sterilize in between use, should be used by the same wearer. You cannot sterilize and give it to somebody else. It should be used by the same man. Soil damage or difficult to breathe. Once you feel your N95 mask, it is becoming difficult to breathe. That means it is getting clogged and you must, uh, of course, uh, discard. This is what I was referring to earlier. If you have four or five masks, you can mark them one, two, three, four. That is after day one, you go to day five and the day nine, day 13, you can use it for three, four circle, maximum five circles, not more than that. And again, you set it, use it. So this way you remove, you take the life of four masks to about 20, 25 days. Because it is not possible to use N95. I mean, it is quite possible.
costly and you cannot uh, most of the corporates cannot afford to have it uh, use it daily cloth mask as i told surgical masks need replacement daily n95 are expensive not easily available and are for healthcare providers for vast majority of people cloth masks are cheap easily available washable and reusable it is easily wa washed and reused only thing it also has to be a three layered mask so single layer mask should not be used so this is what has been uh, uh, advised by the government of india that 100% fabric mask should be used three layers minimum washed and dried before use ironing also can be done thank you so much for your patient hearing and uh, and you the rest of the stiff link how effect is you see n95 mask if you are using without a valve it is causing difficulty in breathing n99 nine causes much more so if you are wanting to use, you can use a n95 mask with a valve but as i have already told you you should use a surgical mask over it to prevent the inf giving infection to others and that is quite comfortable we are using it that way believe me it is very comfortable so it is also infected well as i told you it it is not 100% protective you have to take lot of precautions even complete pp is all you know your hands are getting contaminated you tend to change uh, touch your face etc with it and so you know you have to be very careful about it i know it doesn't give 100 but you see if you take full precautions not only wearing it but also the interval things of sanitizing your hands not touching your face not putting your down your mask and drinking water or taking food in between it gives adequate that is the best we can do dr das that is the best we can do ac in clinics you see uh, there are, you see if you are having a simple ac it is fine central acs are not good central acs are not good but if it is an isolated window ac etc they are fine they are not so much of a problem of course you have to carry on the disinfection of the clinic because uh, that is fine so if there are no more questions uh, it is fine thank you all for a patient li listening i hope i have been able to add one or two points over what you have been using continuously and okay there's one more question let me see what's your gut feeling how long is it going to last <laughs> well it is uh, it is a very difficult question to answer today only i was reading the newspapers we said july august we are expecting it to peak so i thought what we are getting in delhi today 1200 or 1300 odd patients is the peak but uh, i i can't answer this question but yes we have to wait and see but the majority believe it will peak peak by july august and then start decreasing in india and i'm sure different states will be different but at least you can say another at least one or two months definitely not before that so advice fresh air open ac yes that is uh, you see if the cooling is less you have more of fresh air you see it is a question of recirculating of the air uh, if you can do do without a ac that you are not recirculating and you use exhaust that is better but you see when it is becoming very hot you are humid you are sweating especially in places where using ppes you know you tend to become very stuffy you know the question is where there is central air conditioning units without proper uh, circuits you know that is the air is being recirculated from one portion infected portion to the other portion there there's a lot of patient there is a lot of complicated things available quite costly not so handy which of course i am sure a lot of the malls etc will start doing but i don't think it is practical in our own setup dpp what's your feeling yeah. when do we see that's advisory uh, thank you all so much and uh, i hope i have been able to enlighten you with some of the newer things that may be coming up and i'm sure as we go ahead more new things will come up and uh, hope you all remain safe and take adequate precautions for both yourselves your staff and the patients with this we have to see covid is there we have to live with it we have to go with it and take precautions stay safe